Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Coffee Guy Sports. Um, this is the first video that we're doing in my post draft grading for each team. Um, hopefully, every single day, I'm going to try to do it every single day. I'm going to have a grade for each team's draft uh, and break it down player by player and give them a grade. Uh, next slide, we'll look at the at the system we're using. Um, so each player will be based on skill set and draft spot. Um, the final grade will average the grades for all the players and that will determine the team's final grade. Um, there will be a little twist I'm throwing in at the end of this video that I'll, I'll explain when we get there. But the grading system is uh, 1 to 10. Uh, 1 to 2.5 is a D, 2.6 to 5 is a C, 5.1 to 7.5 is a B, and 7.6 to 10 is an A. And there may be B pluses, B minuses, etc. in these different drafts. All right. On to this first player in the Cardinals draft. This is the Arizona Cardinals uh, grade. I am going with Paris Johnson Jr., the offensive tackle out of Ohio State. Uh, personally, uh, I believe he was the best tackle, best pure tackle in the class. Uh, you have Peter Skaronsky, who is considered maybe the best offensive lineman overall. But Paris Johnson Jr., as just a pure tackle at the next level, was, in my opinion, the best tackle. Um, he's a great pass blocker, Ohio State. They have a pretty balanced offense, I'd say, but they are known to throw the football with their quarterbacks and with their absolute beasts of wide receivers that they uh, develop there. Um, and he's uh, his his combine and his pro day. He's a good athlete. Um, did did pretty well in in everything that he measured in all the different measurements. Um, the one thing I did see when watching tape and reading up on his on his um, analysis by scouts is that uh, his technique could be improved. He was maybe a little bit raw in in some instances, um, and so that that's my grandpa Paris Johnson Jr. Uh, moving on to their second round pick, B.J. Ojolari. Outside linebacker and edge. Uh, let me go back to Paris Johnson Jr. for a second. I should mention here, uh, they traded down and then back up to get their guy. And in so doing, they secured another first round pick next year. So uh, great value. Uh, that will come into play later on their final grade. Uh, anyways, on to BJ Ojolari. Outside linebacker and edge, he's undersized pass rusher. Um, I believe I saw six foot two, but like two hundred and forty pounds. Um, that's not great as far as rushing as a rusher at the next level. It'll work in college when you're playing against um, not elite competition, and like his stats were good. He he actually had quite a few pressures and sacks uh, this past season. But he, I think he relies too much on his athleticism to um, get to the quarterback and make plays and relies on being able to be fast enough to beat uh, the tackles and offensive linemen to the quarterback. Um, he was decent in coverage, uh, not elite, but his own coverage is, was pretty good. Um like I said, he relies on speed and athleticism to make plays in the backfield. Uh, needs to develop a pass rush plan. Uh, saw this multiple times from different analysts. His If his first move doesn't work as a pass rusher, a lot of times that's it for him. The play's over. He, he doesn't, he cannot adjust on the fly um, once that pass, once his plan is initially um snuffed out by the offensive tackle and and uh, they and they've worked out a plan to stop him um, he may likely be overwhelmed by bigger more technical tackles tackles that know how to handle his speed rush um, and are big enough to keep him at bay and 
technical enough to to make sure that he's always in front of them and they're good and they they keep his, their hands on him. Um, I still think he's a pretty good he's a pretty good tackle, and I think his coverage his coverage ability um, really helps him out here. If his if his if his coverage was not good, this would I don't believe this would be a good pick. Uh, I'd feel me, maybe mediocre, uh, but as such, I give him a, I, I grade him a seven. Um, I think he's a decent a decent pass rusher. I, I just think his size, um, his size and lack of a pass rush plan, is what is um, holding him back here. So maybe he'll develop more in the NFL and add some add some strength and some uh, and some. Uh, technique that'll that'll really help him out here in the future <clears throat> moving on to Garrett Williams cornerback out of Syracuse um, he's a smaller quarterback cornerback he is five foot ten not very quick um, probably going to find a home in the slot uh, like I say here on the screen um, it's just in the NFL quarterback or uh, wide receivers are Bigger, more athletic. Um, you're you're gonna struggle. You're gonna be able to. You're gonna struggle, um, especially in you know Arizona or in Arizona when you're going up twice a year and you're gonna be playing guys like DK Metcalf and now you've got a uh, you know oh shoot uh, you know Debo Samuel. And um, I'm blanking on the other wide receiver there in, in uh, San Francisco, who's pretty quick. And then you know you've got uh, the do- the uh, not the Dodgers, <laughs> uh, the Rams, who always seem to have a, re- a wide receiver that is an issue. And Cooper Cup, I know he was hurt last year, but he's a problem. And I think this guy is going to have to have to make his home in the slot. And find, that's where he's going to have to have to play. Um, his his technique is going to have to be his strength because he is not a natural enough athlete to make up for the size that he has. Smaller cornerbacks can be successful on the outside, but they have to have athleticism to keep up with the wide receivers and good ball skills and good coverage skills to to um, be able to be able to handle those wide receivers. So I grade him out as a six. Um, overall, I mean, it was a strong cornerback class. Uh, I I feel like this this pick could have been there for them, maybe at a later later round, later pick. Now, um, the, here's Michael Wilson, their wide receiver out of uh, Stanford. He has good size. He plays good. His tape is he plays fast on his tape. And his run blocking is a strength, which um, the Cardinals are probably, with the way their offense is set up right now, I feel like they're going to be trying to run the ball a decent amount. Having a good wide receiver that can block, run block is is so underrated in the league. Um, so often great wide receivers are say Cooper Cup his route his run block is noticeable on on TV like you watch him and he's opening up running lanes for his running for his, the running back running back bounces to the outside and there's Cooper Cup holding a block to spring him for an additional 5 10 however many more yards so Good run, uh, good run blockers wide re- as wide receivers, somewhat underrated by a large, large number of people out there, but so necessary. Um, his route running does need improvement, but that's something that can be developed. The hands are not great. Probably needs to spend some time, um, you know, with a with a uh, uh, the jugs machine, you know, catching catching footballs. Um, his probably his biggest drawback, and probably the reason why he maybe slipped a little bit past where maybe he could have been drafted, is his health. He has never played a completely full season in college. 
Now, I do think that's something that you can get past if it's a college as a college athlete. Um, I didn't don't remember seeing any ACL tears or anything like that that could be an issue for his knees or anything long term. So as such, I grade him out as a seven. I think he's I think he's a good developmental wide receiver, and I think he's got skills that will translate w- in the right system. Okay, moving on to John Gaines the second. He is a good athlete, uh, has positional versatility. He's played, I believe, three different positions. I think I saw center, uh, right guard, and um, maybe left tackle or right tackle. But he's played at least three different offensive line positions. He's excellent in uh, zone run schemes. That's where his his he, he's going to find his most success. Uh, he can be developed to handle other things, I believe. Um, UCLA, he's a smart guy. Uh, I was listening to an interview he did. Very well spoken. Uh, definitely mature and sounds like a leader on that uh, that could take step into a role in that offensive line and be able to uh, help guys around him. Um, he sometimes struggles uh, sustaining blocks and pushing to the second level. Um, his strength was not a strong, was <laughs> corny as that might sound, his strength was not a strong point. So he'll have to get stronger and learn how to sustain those blocks against the uh, interior defensive linemen. Um, overall, I, I was impressed. I think his, I think his, nothing I see, I've seen on tape or read about him feels like something that could not be, uh, developed into a strength at the next level. I never believe he'll, I don't believe he'll become elite, but I believe he could be a solid career starter. Okay. Moving on. Here is the new backup quarterback to Kyler Murray. Um, there's other people out there who have done more extensive breakdowns on this guy than I than I could ever do. Um, I will say this: he is older. He's 24, so he's not he's not a young kid. So he most likely career backup. He's not a great athlete. He can run a little bit, but he's not he's not going to be getting he's not going to be dodging a bunch of hits in the pocket, moving around and throwing off platform. His he's most accurate when his feet are set in a clean pocket, and he can get the ball downfield. He doesn't have an elite throwing arm, but he has a strong enough throwing arm. Um, he had high production in college. Um, he's pretty accurate. Like his completion percentage for the past two seasons was about sixty-eight, sixty-nine percent, which is hmm, nice. Uh, which is good enough to be a career backup. So I do think he'll he'll be decent and be able to help out if Kyler Murray misses any games or um, etc. Uh, I grade him out as a seven. I think he was decent. I believe he's taken in the fifth round. Yeah, decent decent uh, quarterback there for the for the Cardinals. Um, I'm probably going to mispronounce this guy's name. Owen Papo out of Auburn. He's an undersized interior linebacker. So he's six foot, and I want to say 220-ish, if I remember right. He's a good athlete as far as he's fast, and he's good in coverage. But he struggles against the run in that he gets held up on blocks and maybe struggles to see the running lanes where a running back can slip past him and because he's undersized, he won't recognize that run um, or he'll get stuck on a block. So as a linebacker, I think he'll, I, I most likely think he'll be a backup or he'll be put out in a, in different packages to best utilize his athleticism. Um, so I grade him out as a 5.5. Um, uh, which is me, which is more of a mediocre 
mediocre pick, more like a career backup or a rotational linebacker. Um, Kytrell Clark is cornerback out of Louisville. Um, he's undersized. I believe he's also five foot ten. He's a decent athlete, not elite. Uh, the evaluations that I've seen on him and the tape that I've watched, he's not a super great tackler, and he seems to miss tackles or or his hands just almost slide off off the wide receiver or running back. Um, it's not he's he's not wrapping them up. Uh, I fully believe career he'll be a career backup or special teamer. Um, I mean, five point five. It it's not. I don't believe it. It was great, great value or a really great pick, uh, in in my opinion. But I don't think it was a terrible pick either. I just think it's a mediocre pick. Uh, the final pick for the for the Arizona Cardinals, Dante Stills, defensive tackle out of West Virginia. Now. I have him graded as a 6.5, but I'm actually kind of high on this guy. He's a little bit um, not undersized, but he has a big enough frame that he could add muscle and bulk and really develop. I think he's a developmental guy with an actual, actually fairly high ceiling. He has quick burst off the line. He's a good athlete in speed and... Uh, Shuttle drills. Like I said, he needs to add muscle and his technique needs to improve. If the defensive line coach in, in Arizona knows how to utilize this guy and help him, this help him improve his technique, I I believe he'll he'll go a long ways there in Arizona. So I have a grade as a six point five. So the composite grade on this on their draft is a six point seven two or a B, a solid B. Now, here's where it's going to get a little bit, it's going to change a little bit. Because of the trades they did, they are so well set up for next year's draft that they can do really anything they want next year, and their team will be miles better. They have two first-round picks. They can either tank to get a, another quarterback. I know they have Kyler Murray, but maybe they're not sold on him. They have a new coaching staff in there, new general manager in there. If they can find a way to offload his contract and trade him away to anybody else, they may try to do that and, and start all the way over again. Or they've got great options there at the top of next year's draft. They have wide receivers, um, I'm blanking on the guy out of out of uh, Ohio State. I believe his name's Harrison, one of the best wide receivers I've seen since beginning to watch football. Guy is elite size, elite speed, elite hands, elite route running. Uh, he he will be an absolute monster. And I'm just going to go ahead and tell you now, probably a top four or five pick in next year's draft, which is insane when you're talking about a wide receiver. So, because of how they did their draft grade or their draft trades and draft day, I'm actually going to give them a seven or a B plus. Uh, I think they're they're actually going to do pretty. I actually think they did pretty well, considering what they got set up for the future. All righty, guys. Thanks for joining me for this uh, first video. Hopefully, uh, we'll have the Atlanta Falcons video out uh, soon. We're going to be going uh, alphabetically by the city. And I can't wait to come back to you more. Um, and I'm off to study more tape for the next video.